I know that the more I can be of service during the next week and a half, the more my potential students will feel as though they are supported and that I am the guide for them. I'm Amy Porterfield, ex-corporate girl turned CEO of a multi seven-figure business. But it wasn't all that long ago that I lacked the confidence, the budget, and the time to focus on growing my small but mighty business. Fast forward past many failed attempts and lessons learned, and you'll see the business I have today, one that changes lives and gives me more freedom than I ever thought possible. One that used to only exist as a daydream. I created the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast to give you simple, actionable, step-by-step strategies to help you do the same. If you're an ambitious entrepreneur or one in the making who's looking to create a business that makes an impact and a life you love, you're in the right place, friend. Let's get started. Well, hey, my friend, I'm so excited that you decided to tune in for this episode because you are about to hear a real-time, in-the-moment recording of how I'm feeling before going into my biggest launch of the year, which is Digital Course Academy. So let me give you some context before I get into all of this and why I'm doing this episode. So first of all, I thought it would be interesting if you got to hear firsthand from somebody who's launched a lot of digital courses, what it feels like going into the launch, what I'm worried about, what I'm thinking, where I'm struggling, what's working, what's not, just everything before the launch. And when I say before the launch, what I'm talking about is before the card opens up. And so we're about one week away from the card opening up for Digital Course Academy. So I am deep in it. And it's funny that I'm recording this today because today I literally voice texted my CEO and I'm like, I'm nervous. And let me tell you all the things I'm nervous about. So I feel it the most today because this is happening next week. So it's coming up soon. So anyway, I just kind of wanted to share with you a little glimpse into my mind, which is kind of a scary place to be because I know that you're going to launch. You've already launched maybe, or you're going to be launching soon. And I guess I just want you to know that you're not alone. I want you to know that what you're feeling and thinking is very normal. And also hearing from someone that's 14 years in that still has the same concerns and worries you have, I know it might be like, oh, I'm going to be worrying about this stuff even 14 years in. Well, really, I want you to remember, look, these fears and anxieties, they don't go away, but I'll probably be able to manage them better once I have a few launches under my belt. And that's what I want you to walk away with from this episode. So I'm going to record how I'm feeling going into the launch. And then after the launch, just a few days later, I've already scheduled it in my calendar. I'm going to share with you how I feel after the launch. So you're going to get a little before and after something I've never done with this episode. And part of me is like, I don't even know if this is a good idea. I might just want to scratch the whole thing. We'll see once it's done, but hopefully it makes the airways. Hopefully you're listening to it right now, because I do think it's important for you to know that you're not alone and that I get you and I'm just like you. And we're going through the same things because entrepreneurship can feel so freaking lonely. And I don't know about you, but many times I'm like, I'm the only one who feels this way or something's wrong with me. Why am I struggling with this? But everyone else seems not to be struggling with that. And it's not true. So I'm here to prove it. But before I get into all the details of how I'm feeling going into this launch, we're about a week out. Like I said, let me give you some context. Digital Course Academy, it's our biggest launch of the year and it's all hands on deck. We often override our four-day work week policy, and we go to five days a week for a few weeks leading up and during the launch. So it's, again, all hands on deck. Behind the scenes, customer service is prepping to make sure that they have all of the guided responses. That's what we call them, guided responses we're going to need for all the questions that come up. A little behind the scenes, I don't call them canned responses because I never want my team cutting and pasting a message and sending it out to everyone that has a question about XYZ. 
I want there to be a personalization with every single email that we send. And I want people to feel as though we're listening and we understand where they're coming from. So I have guided responses to probably over 150 questions that come up during the launch. But I'm hoping that my team, and I know they are, with every response, adding a little TLC so people know that we're slowing down and we're really hearing what they're asking us and paying attention. So anyway, customer service, getting ready with their guided responses. Operation is working hard to make sure that all my master classes are going to go off without a hitch. Pray to God that everything works out with the technology. So that's operations. The marketing team, they've been filling up a big boot camp that we're getting ready to do. They're running all the email campaign testing. They're making sure that everyone knows what's happening in terms of when things are happening with the launch. Like marketing is in full swing right now. And even my CEO is working on different things with the launch. Like I'm telling you, everyone's involved. If I can get my mom and my husband involved, I would, but it gets a little dicey at that point. So that's where we are right now. We've been working on this launch for a few months now. The beautiful thing about Digital Course Academy is I've been doing it since 2019. So in January 2019 was the first time I launched this specific program. I launched it twice in 2019, once in 2020, twice again in 2021, once in 2022, and now once this year. And I might go back to two times next year. We'll see. So I don't know. We'll figure that out later. I can't even think about that now. But what I wanted to share with you is that when you create one digital course and you launch it over and over and over again, you get better every single time. And because you're getting better, it leaves room for new opportunities. And so we're doing a boot camp. Last year, we had 4,500 people pay to be in my boot camp. This year, we have a few days more to fill up the boot camp. And we're already at 10,000 people signed up for it, over double what we did last year. Now, why were we able to make that happen? Because we know this launch. We didn't have to start from scratch. And when you don't have to start from scratch, you can add on more advanced marketing strategies, try new things, practice different things, experiment, because you're not scrambling with a blank Google Doc starting from scratch. So I'm making a plea to you to create one course and launch it a few times a year, every year. Make your course better, make your marketing better, but stop starting from scratch every single year with something new because the growth happens when you get better at what you're putting out there. That's the magic. So that's why I love digital courses and I love launching them over and over again because my marketing gets better, my teaching style gets better, my students get bigger results year after year because I'm not always scrambling to start from scratch. Okay, that was a little bit of a tangent. I wasn't really planning on going there, but I couldn't help it. So let's get back to how I'm feeling about a week before the card opens. Okay, so how am I feeling about this launch? Well, About a month ago, leading up to today, I've been feeling really good. My team is working incredibly well together. And, you know, uh, about a year and a half ago, I lost my right hand, Chloe. You all know I talk about Chloe a lot. She decided to stop working for a while. She had a baby. Ruby Rose is now in the world and she's precious. But Chloe ran these launches in my marketing department. And so last year and now this year, we have a new team running these launches, which was very scary for me because there's a lot on the line. But my team and my marketing directors, they are just in sync and they're making things happen and everyone knows what their role is. So I felt really good and supported up until this point, up until today. I think the anxiety I'm feeling today It's just that we're getting closer. And what happens with me is that actually we have a quality problem. We have more people in the boot camp than I anticipated. And so it makes me nervous. Like my first thought is, what if the technology goes down? What if 
I always get scared, like, what if I get sick or something happens in my family and I can't show up at the level that I've promised? Like, I go into a lot of what ifs. And today I have found myself saying all these things. What if the technology doesn't work? What if I'm not at my best? What if something happens and I can't show up the way I want to? What if we don't have enough support in the boot camp because we have more people than we anticipated? Like, what if, what if, what if, what if? That happens. That is happening to me today. So the first thing I did is I reached out to my CEO and I said, I need to share these challenges that I'm anticipating or things I'm nervous about because I'd love to just talk them out with you. And so I went to somebody, I shared what I was nervous about, and then she came back to me and she's like, okay, I hear you. And let me just remind you, here's our plan for this. This is what we're going to do if that doesn't work. This is our plan B. This is what we put in place. So that's not a challenge. Like she's just reminding me of, wait, we've done the work so that we do not have to worry about all these things you're anticipating. So it was such a beautiful reminder. Now you might not have someone in your company that you can go to and dump all your worries out on. So if that's not the case, journal. And I'm going to do this as well. Tomorrow morning, my commitment is that I will be journaling all the worries and concerns that come up for me because as we get closer, I just get nervous. Now, in addition to that, though, I think nervous energy is good because it keeps me on my toes. I'm in high alert. I'm paying close attention to everything. I'm communicating what I need. I'm having the hard conversations with my team if that is necessary. Like, it is game on. So. I am no stranger to this nervous energy, and I do think I use it as fuel and use it to my best ability to show up as my very best. Now, one thing that I've learned from my own coach is that if I'm going to go into the spiral of what ifs, what if this happens, what if that happens, what if that happens, and they're all negative, what I've learned over 14 years is that I have to give equal airtime to the opposite of that. So this is what I did not do years ago and what you might not be doing yet, but what I want you to adopt and start doing is that what if the technology goes down? The next thought I force myself to have is what if that technology is so seamless that we do not have any problems? How amazing is that going to feel? And then what if something happens and I can't show up at the capacity that I've committed to? Well, I've got an amazing team that will step in for me. I've got amazing friends and peers that will help me out. There's always a solution. You know, I live by that saying, everything is figure outable. Thank you, Marie Forleo. So I believe that. And so all of these fears that come up, I spend time giving equal airtime to the opposite, which is the positive thought that's going to serve me. So I'm well aware that all these fears, if I let them circle around in my head too much, they will not serve me. So I get them out by talking to someone on my team that I trust and then journaling about them. So I will be doing, I've done both of those things over the last few weeks and I'll continue to do those right into the launch. Also, I want to talk about my energy level. One thing that I've been doing religiously every single day leading up to this launch is I'm taking naps, 20 to 30 minute naps at lunchtime every single day, even when I don't feel like it, because I might not fall asleep every single time, but to quiet my mind just for 20 to 30 minutes in the middle of the day is the best thing I can do. I did that today and I woke up right before an interview I needed to do. And it was a fantastic interview. I literally felt recharged, rejuvenated. I was ready to go. I also make sure speaking of sleep every night, eight hours, there's no exception to this every night, eight hours of sleep leading up to and during the launch. Sleep is one of the most important things and I rarely get sick and I think it's because I get enough rest every single night. And it's not easy because I have a husband that would love to stay up to like 10, 11, 12 at night, but we always go to bed together. And so I'm looking at him around 8.30, 8.45, like, are you getting ready for bed? And he's like, what in the world? But I really like to be in bed by 9 or 9.30. And so I, I make that a rule and luckily Hobie just goes along with it. So rest is a really big thing for me. One of the things that I was thinking about is that, you know, I've done this launch many times. So what makes this one feel different or exciting? Because every launch I go into, always a different energy. There's always something I'm most excited about. And I think it's two things. Number one 
We've had a concierge team for the last few years. I've talked about it on the podcast. I did an entire episode about the concierge team. And it's a group of alumni and my team members that are willing to spend their time getting on 20 to 30 minute phone calls with people that are thinking about buying Digital Course Academy, but they're on the fence. And they just need somebody to listen to them and answer some specific questions that they have, give them some personal attention to make sure they're right for the program or not. And this team, they are not trained to talk people into DCA. I don't want anyone talked into buying my program because when they get in, if they're not a right fit, I feel the stress of that. So this is a team that's really helping people if they're on the fence to decide if they're a good fit or not. And so... I have this amazing team. We've built it up bigger this year than ever. They're going through specific trainings. They all know the program really well. I've helped them understand you know, what it's like to go through the program, who's right for the program, what we're going to do in the program. So I've been a part of helping the team as well. Josh, he's my customer experience director. He is running this team and he's been with me for many, many years, I think four years now. So he's the perfect person to lead it. And I'm excited about it because I know that it's not all me. And so that was a really big realization. I actually made it today where I was telling Josh, you know, I'm getting nervous and anticipating, you know, having all these people show up and I want to do my very best, but I also know I'm not alone in this. And they might get on a webinar and they might not be ready to buy just yet because they're on the fence. And then they get on a call with Josh or Jilly or Megan or the other people that are supporting and They get the the support they need to know if they're right for the program or not. And then they decide to get in or out, whatever works for them. I love that I have extra support built in. So it's not 100% reliant on just my webinars. And so that's something that I feel great about and I'm excited about and it eases my mind. Another thing is that for the first time ever, I always do about six to eight live webinars. They're always the same webinar, but I just give different dates and times. And again, they're all live and they're all the same webinar. But this year, the first four I'm doing in a studio. You know that studio with all the the screens behind the presenter? You've seen them probably online a lot. Well, I work with a team. The company's called Sage. Blue and Berry own Sage. And I've been working with them for many years. They used to do my live events Well, I'm doing it obviously virtually, but in their studio, I'm flying to Charleston doing my first webinar, four webinars there. And the reason I'm doing that is I feel like it might create more engagement, more excitement, something new, something interesting. It's a challenge for me because typically I'm just cozy right there in in my home studio and I'm going to really challenge myself to get out of my comfort zone. So I'm growing with this launch and we're going to have a new different type of experience we've never had before, which hopefully will translate into people getting more engaged and more excited about the program. So that's what I'm anticipating is going to be different and also especially exciting about it. Now, challenges. I already mentioned that the boot camp is bigger than I anticipated and the challenge is making sure everyone feels supported. So I was concerned about that. When I'm concerned about something, I don't just, like what I shared with you, I kind of dumped it on my CEO to share with her what I'm concerned about. I also got into action. So today I called Sylvia, my community director, and I said, do you need more support in the boot camp? What do we need to do to make sure that our students in the boot camp feel absolutely supported since it's bigger than anticipated? So we were pitching and catching ideas about that. So I'm anticipating the fact that we're going to need more support so we're going to get it. And so that felt really good knowing, okay, we're good. We're supported there. And I could put that worry to rest. But I think overall, what I wanted to share with you is that yes, the launches get easier in the sense of, I feel really confident about my webinar. I feel really confident about the messaging and how to help people decide if they're ready for a digital course or not. I'm really excited to engage with new people. So all of that feels great. But no matter how long I've done this, I'm always going to feel a level of stress leading up into a launch. I don't know anybody that doesn't. And sometimes I wonder like, why do I put myself through this? Live launching is definitely more stressful than evergreen. But the reason I put myself through this and I put my team through this, and we do a few live launches a year, there's nothing like real-time interaction and connection 
with your potential students, people thinking about buying your course, and of course, those that then get into your program and start your course. I know my audience so well because I'm in real time with them. Over the next, let's say, week and a half, I will probably answer over a thousand questions. Many of them are the same questions, and I will answer them with enthusiasm and with a smile because I know that the more I can be of service during the next week and a half, the more my potential students will feel as though they are supported and that I am the guide for them. And so for me, sure, I feel stress. Yes, I'm going to be exhausted. I know that it's going to be highs and lows when that cart opens up. There's always tech issues that happen or things don't go quite as planned. But I know at the end of the day, when we close that cart on September 28th, I know it will all be worth it. And the reason I know that is because I've been through this before. I've reaped the rewards. I've gotten to work with amazing students. I've seen the transformations they've made. And so what I'm trying to say here is that all the hard work, all the stress, when you're going through it for the first time, your first launch, you will have that question, is this even worth it? Why am I doing this to myself? This is very stressful. Years into it, multiple launches into it, you won't be asking yourself if it's worth it. There hasn't been a day leading up to this launch that I've asked myself, is this all this hard work, time, energy, money worth it? Absolutely. But it doesn't mean it's less stressful or it's not hard. At the end of the day, I am exhausted and it is a lot of work. And truth be told, I haven't seen Hobie much over the last few weeks. But we also know, Hobie and I know this is a season. And once October hits, my weekends are free, my nights are free. I'm more readily available to do the things that he wants to do. So I've communicated with Hobie. Remember, we're in the season. This goes by really quick, and then I'm out of it. So that's another thing. I know I'm in a season of launching, and then I won't be. And so I'm looking at it as though, yes, this is hard. Yes, this is stressful. And yes, I feel tired at the end of most days, but it is so freaking worth it. No matter what happens in the launch, remember, I'm going to come back and give you a little audio of how I feel afterwards. Let's say I don't hit my goal. God forbid. I really hope we do. But let's say I don't hit my goal. Let's say that I had some challenges. It didn't work out as planned. I still know that it's worth it because I've created a course that gets people results. And I've seen it happen over and over again. I've helped people quit their jobs, start their businesses, hit their six figures. I have many students who have hit the million dollar mark. That is amazing. So I guess I just want to tell you, no matter what happens with this launch, it was absolutely worth it. And I feel that today. And I know I'll feel that when the cart closes, but I am looking forward to coming back just a few days after the launch ends and share with you how I'm feeling, the highs, lows, what worked, what didn't. So my friend, I will be back. I'm back. It is just a few days after cart close for Digital Course Academy. And as I promised, I wanted to give you an update now that the cart has closed. So before I go on any further, I just want to welcome all of our brand new students into Digital Course Academy. We are thrilled that you are joining us. We are so excited to get started with you. In just a few days, I'm going to do my first live Q&A inside of the group. There's so much energy. People are getting into their accountability pods. They're getting started today. The first module was released. It's Monday at the time that I'm recording this. So it's really exciting. So thank you for putting your trust in me and in my team. We just can't wait to support you and love up on you and help you get really big results. So shout out to all my new Digital Course Academy students. We just already love you and cannot wait to support you. So update or a quick recap of how it all went down. I just listened to what I had recorded weeks ago. I guess maybe it was like a week ago right before, or maybe two weeks ago, right before we got started with Card Open. And you know, it's so funny to hear all the fears I had and everything that was coming up for me because that is so normal. Like I listened to it and I'm like, yep, this is how I feel pretty much every launch. 
And so now I want to transition into what actually happened. So I'll get to the punchline first. We hit our goal and then blew right past it. It was the best launch of the history of my career. And that's saying a lot, being in business for so many years. And I want to point out that I've had highs and lows throughout the last 14 years in launching my courses. If you've been with me for a while, you know that I had a huge launch in 2020. And in 2021, it was really rough. We did two small launches, but both of them didn't hit the goals that I had set. And it was a hard year for me and my team. But when you don't hit your goals during a launch, it is very hard to manage your mindset. I have absolutely been there. And so to have a launch where I'm hitting all my goals and then I'm blowing past them, one of the biggest takeaways for me is I tried to stay as present as possible, knowing that when things don't go well, I know what that feels like. And I know how hard it is to manage a team and manage everyone else's mindset and be a great leader when things aren't going as planned. And so because things were going as planned and even better than planned, I just try to stay really present and enjoy it and enjoy my team, enjoy our new students that were coming into our community. So that's number one. I just try to stay present. Another really amazing thing that happened during this launch was that I got to know so many of you at a deeper level. I am very clear, whether you joined DCA or not, but if you were part of the launch, you got on a webinar, you were in my boot camp, you were part of maybe my lives, whatever it might have been, listening to your concerns, your challenges, your worries, your dreams, and your goals was very, very valuable to me, meaning I feel like I know so many of you more at such a deeper level. I feel like I understand what you need more, how I could support you, whether you join DCA or not, just in general, as you are on your entrepreneurial journey. So I always say to my students, live launches are important. I know we all want to move to Evergreen. I have programs on Evergreen. I love to make money every day and sell my courses online, even if I'm not showing up live. I love it but there's nothing like a live launch. Number one, you grow as an entrepreneur. Two, you grow as a marketer. Three, you learn about your students in a way that you will never learn about them in Evergreen or automation. And those three things did happen. I definitely have grown as a leader and as a marketer during this launch. One example is I told you earlier that I was traveling to Charleston for my first four webinars and I was doing them in those big fancy studios with all the cameras and the screens and all of that. That was a stretch for me. Each webinar was about two and a half to three hours once you add in a really long Q&A. And then I did this really fun interactive thing at the very end. So it was just different and special and it was long. And I was standing the entire time where normally I'm sitting, which is very different. And I was on camera the whole time. And if I wasn't on camera, I didn't know if I was on camera or not. So I just went through the whole two and a half to three hours, assuming I'm on camera the whole time, which is very exhausting, as you guys know, if you've done camera work. And so that pushed me out of my comfort zone. And that was good for me, for sure. So I'll tell you what worked and what didn't. But this is all the stuff that really worked for us. So we hit our goal. We busted past our goal. We've never had a bigger launch in the history of my career. That all was amazing. Another thing that was incredible is that our goal was to have 8,000 people in the boot camp. And at the end, we had over 16,000 sign up. And that was a very big deal. And to have 16,000 people raise their hand and say they want to kickstart their digital course journey that was incredible to us and not expected whatsoever. And so the boot camp was the highlight of my entire launch. I loved all of you so much, whether you got into DCA or not, just watching the ideas pop up, watching you engage with other people in the, the boot camp, learn how to kickstart your digital course. That was incredible. So I loved that. My team came together at the highest level. Every single department was incredible. Customer service had thousands and thousands of emails to get through and help scout throughout the launch. Operations helped me with all the technology, especially coming back into my studio when I came home. I did another webinar here. I did a post-it note party here. I did lives here. So operations helped me. Of course, marketing ran this entire launch from start to finish. They were incredible. 
my marketing team, specifically Kelsey on my marketing team, had the idea of going all in with the boot camp, doing a bigger push to get people into the boot camp, adding new things in the boot camp, making it special. And that truly was such a game changer. So that was incredible. Allison managed the affiliates. So I have two directors in marketing, Kelsey and Allison. They managed this whole launch in terms of the marketing side of it. And Allison, with the help of Kaylee, managed our affiliates. And our affiliates were incredible. They showed up. They had me on their podcast. They did lives. They did amazing social posts. I just couldn't be more grateful for our affiliates. And then, of course, we have our community department. There are three of them in community, and they were tasked with managing 16,000 people in a boot camp. So I got to give it to them. And we brought in extra support and tried to support them in any way possible, but they did an incredible job. And so community was incredible. And then, of course, the other department is content, and content managed all of my boot camp trainings. Of course, everything that's in DCA, but that program was already created, but all the new bonuses we did that came from content. So every department had a hand in supporting this launch. So my team, I've never seen them more in step than in this launch. Now, because we were hitting all our goals, it made it a really fun launch as well. Part of the team was here in Nashville. Part of the team stayed home. We just had people in Nashville that needed to be there. And so that was a great experience and having people around me during the launch is always so much fun. So all of that was great. Cost of ads came down versus last year and the years before. So I am seeing something good happening with paid advertising with Instagram and Facebook specifically. So we were seeing some really good cost per registration for a lot of our ads, which was a huge, huge plus. And also we did something cool this year. One of my students, Nicole Burke, she is a course creator who teaches people how to create gardens. I talked about her a lot during this launch, but she graciously offered to come to my house because she lives in Nashville and we shot about 25 videos, short form videos to encourage people to get into the boot camp. And Stacy, my social media manager, she worked with Nicole because Stacy created tons of videos with me as well. So We had our own videos, and then we had Nicole help us with special videos. All of that helped immensely. If you paid attention to my social, it had a different vibe this year. It was a little bit more in your face, a little bit more focused on important hooks. As much as I hated the videos that worked the best were the videos where I talked about how I've made over $85 million in course sales, helped over 50,000 students, all that, like the numbers, those videos converted the best. I hate that because I don't like to talk about money that blatantly, but it's what the audience wanted. And so those videos tended to do really well, but the short form videos that was exciting and different and fun. I got a lot of text messages from my peers, like your social feels different this launch. And it really did. I took more risks. I put myself out there in different ways, but that still felt good for me in alignment of what I wanted to stand for and what I wanted my messaging to be. So this is just a little nudge to you. Don't don't be afraid to change your messaging or change your social if you're feeling called to be a little bit bolder. I think that's what I would say. I think we're bolder with our social media. So that was really exciting. So, so much worked. I think some of my friends were saying, why do you think that you were able to get thousands and thousands of people into Digital Course Academy this year? And the boot camp was a huge one. So if you're a part of the boot camp, I'm so glad you were part of it. I hope you loved it. It was my favorite part of the launch, like I said. But also, we've been focusing on our list, the health of our email list, our open rates, our click-through rates, adding more people to our email list engaging with those that we have. So if you ever needed a nudge to be more intentional with your email list in order to have bigger digital course launches, this is it. Because we are proof that putting the time, energy, and focus into the health of your email list, I have this motto, double your list, double your launch. And I really do believe it's true. And so if you're struggling with your digital course launches, double down on that email list because it changes everything. So I'm just, I I took some notes before I came on here. It was funny in the audio I recorded before the launch, I said, even if we don't hit our goal, it was worth it. And yes, we hit our goal, but 
it was so worth it. Just you all were so incredible just hearing your stories and your excitement and you're hungry to to do something different in your business. It was just incredible. I think I'm going to save my most favorite moment from the launch to the very end. So let me talk to you about a few things, a few hiccups. I think one of the biggest hiccups we had was on the welcome party video for our boot camp. So here we are, we got 16,000 people in the boot camp. Everything needed to work, like because this was the kickoff and the technology was a challenge. Specifically, it was more than anything, it was the chat. It was not allowing people in. People couldn't get on the live. We had some challenges. I don't even know what happened on the back end, but people were struggling to get in on the very first training in the boot camp. Then the chat was not allowing people in. And I didn't know all these problems were going on while I was live. But afterwards, there were some negative comments in the boot camp, and it freaked me out because I thought we cannot have a bunch of negativity in here. We just started. People paid to be in the boot camp. It wasn't free. So technology issues when people pay are even more frustrating to the person who paid and really scary to me, like the person putting it on, my team, us. So this is something cool that we did. Number one, we apologize right away. Hey guys, we know we had some tech issues. Here's what's happened. Here's how we're going to fix it. Like right away, we made no excuses and we said, yep, we had some problems, we're gonna fix it. But also Rebecca on my team had this idea to have different chat rooms. And so instead of one big chat room, because we use a chat role for our lives, we our lives, our trainings in the bootcamp, they were on a web page that we used Vimeo live to stream my live video into. And then we had a chat underneath the Vimeo live video. And so we decided to have four different chat rooms and you could go into any chat room. And we said, if you wanted a cozier corner on the web to experience this, go into one of the slower, quieter chats. And in every chat room, I had one of my team members in there. And so if they had questions, we were there for them, but some chat only had like a hundred people in it where another chat would have like 3000 people in it. So it was a very different vibe. So you could pop in and out of any of the chat rooms and that cured everything. Like right away, any of the negative chatter of people being frustrated and I understood why they were went away. So then we did this throughout the entire rest of the boot camp. So I'm here to say that, yes, we had tech issues here and there, like scattered throughout the launch. But we learned from it in the the different chat rooms, that idea came out of a big mistake we had. And I don't think we'll ever do it different again. Like we will always have multiple chat rooms now. So that was something really good that came out of something that really kind of freaked me out. And so, yeah, we had a few chat or a few tech issues along the way, but overall, nothing too dramatic. We use Spiffy for our shopping cart. And on day one, we had hundreds and hundreds of sales come in right away from my boot campers because my first masterclass was for my boot campers and we had a problem. People could not get their order to come through. And when you're live on a webinar and you're seeing that people are having problems because my team had to say, tell them that we are fixing the shopping cart issue. I'm like, oh my gosh, like my stomach dropped, but I'm live and people are looking at me. So I'm like, all right, guys, we're fixing it. I think it's good to go. But it was an issue with Spiffy, but I got to give Spiffy a shout out because they got on a phone call with us in 10 minutes and fixed it. Like they were there for us. And we really appreciated that. One of the things when you're going into a launch, having a relationship with the tools, software, and resources you use, knowing who to call if there's a problem is everything, my friends. Even if you're not planning a multi, multi multi-million dollar launch like I was, even if your goal is to have 100 people sign up, know who you need to call if your web page goes down, if your shopping cart goes down, if you're having problems with your webinar software, who do you reach out to? Networking for those kind of things is everything. So just a little nudge to to know who to contact when something doesn't go right is a big deal. So that all worked out. So I don't have a lot of things that didn't go wrong. And believe me, in the years past, I have, I promise. But this time, so much went right. And I feel so very blessed by all of it. And I am tired. I A few things that I did wrong with my calendar. I planned some trips and some some different work things during this month of launching. Like we, you know, we pre-launched for at least a month and then we had a eight or nine day launch. So it was long, 
And I did too much not related to the launch during that time. I would not do that again. Also, I probably should have taken off Monday, which is today. And I had planned to get a bunch of podcasts recorded today and I'm really tired. So even though I I slept over the weekend, I, I really should have taken today off. So note to self in the future. And for those of you who launch and you're in the adrenaline and it's like an eight to 10 day launch, know that you're probably going to have some, I call it low level depression, but I'm prone to depression. You can call it like a little bit of a, a dark cloud. When all the adrenaline goes away, when your team is no longer with you, if you bring them to your house, when you're not like excited about the launch results, like I'm excited, but like we're not in it anymore it feels sad a little bit. I feel a little sad, but I know that's coming. I was talking to a few girlfriends. They're like, how are you doing? I said, I'm tired, which is expected, but the low level depression happened on Saturday and Sunday. I knew it was coming. So I just let it be. I didn't try to push it away. I didn't try to like say, oh my gosh, this is terrible. I knew it was coming and now I'm feeling better today. So it's kind of starting to lift. So that's a good thing right there. But my most favorite part of the launch that I wanted to share before I wrap up is this. At the end, we get on a Zoom call with my entire team. Half the team's at my house in Nashville. We planned a really beautiful dinner for everyone that night that was on site because it's really stressful to be on site. Whether the launch is going good or not, there's a lot of energy pulsing through all of us and a lot to get done. And so everyone was exhausted. So we did this beautiful dinner at the end. But before we did that, we got on the call with our, our external team as well. And I was saying, we hit our goal and we passed our goal. And oh my gosh, this is amazing. But then I said, but we all know it's not about the money. At the end of the day, it is about the promises we made and the people that we promised to serve and these amazing entrepreneurs that are looking to up level. We have a lot of responsibility now. And so I was talking about these amazing people that came into DCA and I was naming some names of people we got to know over the last week and how we made a lot of promises that we've got to stick to and we've got to be there for them. And I look over and I see one of my employees, her name's Jilly. She's my longest standing employee. She's just bawling, crying, just crying and crying. Now, Jilly has the biggest heart of anyone I've ever known. We call her our national treasure. She also was on many calls with many of you. You might've talked to Jilly. If you did a call with my concierge team to make sure you're ready for the program, you might've talked to Jilly. She heard so many stories. She heard how people want to make a difference and how they sometimes feel desperate that they can't figure this out or they feel frustrated with what their business looks like. She has heard all their challenges and their dreams and their goals. And so the minute I said, we have to remember why we do this and who we're doing it for, Jilly started crying, then all of us started crying. And it was just a beautiful moment to remember there are human beings who have put our trust in us and they're looking for us to guide them. And that's a lot of responsibility, but we are so up for the challenge and we care about everyone who joined DCA. So her tears reminded me of how much my team cares. And then of course, everyone else starts crying. It was just a really sweet moment to remember why we do what we do. And so that was my favorite moment of the launch to kind of close it all down. So I'm here to tell you that I know this launch was big. If you looked at it, it was flashy. It was big. It was exciting. But For those who join DCA, the model inside DCA is not as flashy. It's very doable, and it's a perfect place to start where you can build on that. So you are in good hands, my friends. If you went on this journey with us, whether you joined DCA or not, thank you so very much. We are so honored to serve all of you. We are excited to get started with Digital Course Academy, and I feel really proud of what we've been able to do and really honored that I get to do it with so many of you. So Thank you for being a part of this journey. It was an amazing experience, my most favorite launch I've ever had. And I can't wait to dive in and just get going with all of my new students. So there you have it, just a quick recap. And I'm excited for everything to come and to see all the courses that are getting created. All right, my friends, thank you so much for tuning in. And I can't wait to see you next week. Same time, same place. Bye for now.